I'm here with the new Lexus IS in the F Sport. And I'm going to give you a little quick tour of the car and I'll let you know what I think in uh, having owned a 3 Series and a C Class and an Audi A4 of this generation, how it compares. I would definitely recommend the F Sport package. As to the styling, it grows on me the more and more I see it. Um, I definitely think in Gen 2, I hopefully they'll soften it down a little bit, much like BMW did. Uh, you know, with their uh, Bengals styling from that generation. From the side, though, it looks phenomenal. Uh, again, the F-Sport package gives it, you know, the nice summer tires that are a little bit bigger, uh, the little F-Sport badge there, and uh, this down here, which just almost is, if you look at it, it's almost like a continuing swoop, uh, you know, back into the bumper there. I think that's a cool style uh, choice. Good looking car, and then it's got this like kink in the window here, which is kind of interesting. And then, of course, it's got the LEDs back here that make the famous L for Lexus uh, and of course you do get um, some you know ground effects down there with the F, uh, F Sport. Um, good looking car overall. You guys some exhaust uh, because I bet this exhaust might sound pretty decent. Uh, we shall see. It sounds uh, pretty nice in the car in the engine so let's see how it sounds outside. <laughs> like it in this red it kind of just shouts I've also seen these in black and what the black does is it does soften a few of these uh, lines a little bit um, which some people may prefer I meant, uh, specific details I really do like how there's this kind of mesh uh, material down there I think that's super nice like I like something in between just blacked out and chrome sorry about my hands I've been working on cars all day but I do like something between blacked out and Chrome, and I think that does it for you. So let's check out the engine. Although this is called a 300, much like that is a 300. Nowadays, those numbers don't really mean what they used to. So let's check out the engine in there. Uh, so it is a two liter, uh, pretty nicely laid out engine. I thought it was kind of interesting. They do put the battery in the front because this car does have a front uh, bias weight distribution. You think they would could have moved that to the back and helped gotten that a little bit closer. Um, but very clean, nice engine package overall. I do like how it's set really far back. I started checking out this car, I said on my first impression, having owned all three of the competitors, why would you get a Mercedes or a, uh, an Audi or a BMW? Which I will answer at the end why you might, but why you might also choose this. So Lexus did not give me this Lexus hat. This Lexus hat I'm wearing. Uh, it's actually part of this review. I actually had it in a swag bag from some event I was at that Le where Lexus gave it. Uh, and so I thought, hey, I'm in a Lexus. Might as well wear the hat. Uh, let me get out of the way some things that uh, I'm not a huge fan of or things that kind of Lexus could improve in the next version uh, of this car. One is the transmission. It's their older 8-speed, uh, I'm sensing, because uh, sometimes it's a little uh, slow to play catch-up. It's not bad but it's definitely not great. Like some of the newer Lexus transmissions are definitely like the ZF uh, eight speeds to be sure. I'm um, also like uh, something that kind of surprised me. There's one uh, cigarette lighter port uh, in the console, one on the whole car. Um, on my 2005, that's the only sedan recently I can uh, remember that only had one throughout the entire car. Usually there's one like in the back, uh, you know, down by the glove box, somewhere else here there's only one I even looked it up in the manual just to be sure kind of um, not great if you have like a radar detector and like a dash cam or anything else that uses that cigarette lighter port uh, so just something to be uh, aware of again probably not a probably not a deal breaker uh, but it is it was just kind of surprising to me on a you know 2018 uh, car all right um, and the other thing is uh, this engine, uh, which I'll talk about in the drive review. It used to be uh, called the IS200, now it's called T, now it's called the, uh, this engine used to be called the 200T, now it's called the 300. Also, and I'll talk more about this in the drive review, um, but be because this is an F Sport versus a full F car, there's no Sport Plus mode. Um, so the steering in Sport, uh, it's not as direct and quick as it could be. You know, it's something for Lexus to improve in the next version 
uh, of this car. Very nice. I would say only beaten by the Mercedes, probably, you know, tied with the BMW. The Audi's close. There are some parts of the Audi that are nicer. There are some parts of this that are nicer. Uh, but let's start going through it. You know, nice leather and metal trim pieces everywhere on the F Sport package. You get this F wheel and you get this awesome gauge, uh, which I could do a whole video on, frankly. Uh, what's most neat about it, though, is this is its party piece. Let me just show you guys. So here's kind of like the standard view. It's kind of a more sporty one, but that's basically something right off the LFA. And in addition to that, this gauge can change as well. That is just about the coolest thing, one of the coolest gauges I've ever seen uh, in a car today. And then of course you can put crazy info down here. Um, you know, of course there's eco, but you guys obviously care about things like there's a, a you know a, a boost meter, which is interesting because most just start at zero. This one actually shows that there's negative boost. It shows the oil pressure and the oil temperature as well. Um, you know, if you're doing that, this is probably one of my favorite party pieces too. I was on a drive and it, those go up to one G, uh, and you can reset it as you like, and then it'll show kind of a path of what your different G's were uh, on your trip. I think that is just super cool. Uh, and it's nice, you know, to see how many G's you were pulling in a turn or braking or accelerating. That is neat that it keeps the record of it. There's a lot of G meters. That one actually keeps the little record of it, uh, which is cool. You know, you do get a lot of the autonomy features uh, on here standard, which is there. And then of course you can do like nav, things like that uh, in there as well. So this is probably, like I said, uh, one of my favorite gauges on the market. Um, so that's yet another reason it's cool to get the F Sport package. Coming around here, this beautiful big, uh, you know, screen. It's 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 down a little bit, so it's not just like stuck on, uh, which you know prevents glare and makes it look nice. So you get this nice Lexus clock. Uh, you get this uh, material here, and this is really cool. When you first start the car, let me just show you. It'll actually show you which seat belts aren't buckled in, and then this is nice too. Um, there's you can you know you can press this up and down, or you can just slide it uh, as well. The Mark Levinson stereo on this guy's. Uh, I like it, it's definitely worth it if you like music. Unfortunately, they've packaged it with the nav, so if you want uh, the Mark Levinson, you have to get the nav, even if you're you know, just gonna use your phone. Also, you know, this, the more I use it, the more I get used to it. Um, I, I prefer the Mercedes approach, which gives you a trackpad and then also a knob, or like the BMW approach, which gives you a knob and a touchscreen. Um, of course, there's a Eco, a Normal, a Sport, and then even a Snow Mode, which on a rear-wheel drive car is helpful. Um, you know, there's this nice leather rest for your wrist here, um, this nice, you know, cup holders here and cup holders in the door nice. and a little metal trim over there. So it's a, you know, it's a nice interior, nice place to spend time coming around to this console here. You know, this is where your power port is. So heated, cooled seats available too. So don't just think this is like a sports car. It is luxurious. And then of course you see those, those kind of metallic look pedals down there, which is pretty nice, kind of definitely sporty. And then you do get the F Sport seats on this. They're not as aggressive as the uh, ones in the, uh, you know, more hardened F cars, but you can see there is actually some really good bolstering, uh, look at that, on the side there. Coming around to the back here, um, you know, still a nice place to spend time. You know, you get some speakers in the door, uh, you get some vents, uh, nothing too crazy. You get very nice Lexus leather. Let's see, I bet you get a, some cup holders here uh, and you get a nice little armrest uh, as well as a sunshade. Uh, and there's a subwoofer and some surround speakers if you do get that Mark Levinson uh, stereo. Frameless mirror design uh, with the home link and the auto dimming built right in there. So there's the control for the active sound control, which thankfully you can turn off if you don't want that augmented sound. You can even adjust the volume, which is Kind of neat. Steering is included. Unlike some of the newer Lexus gens, this does not have the uh, lane centering feature though. Um, and it's a, has a hard time compared to some of the other Lexuses picking up the lane I've noticed too. The startup and shutdown sequence on these cool gauges. Let me do that now. Here's the startup. Pretty cool. Showed it to you. That is so cool. All right, so taking it out on the road, this will be pretty quick because I've had this car for the entire week now. I've actually taken it uh, out with some friends on a curvy road. Uh, and I have to say right off the bat, it is a good uh, sports sedan. 
and I jokingly said in the beginning of this video, um, why would you buy like a 3 Series or a C Class um, or an A4 uh, because of this car? Um, and I've bought all three of those cars in the past and uh, I still kind of wonder that uh, to a certain degree. Let me get the few little critiques I have out of the way early on on this car. They're not many. The, it's still using what I'm going to guess is the older 8-speed transmission uh, Lexus has. Um, it's not as fast as their newer transmission I've experienced in other cars um, or as good as like the ZF 8-speed. Uh, it's a small thing. Also, lots of little gripes like just very little things. This car is now in its, I think, third generation. Um, and the cooled seats, they're not that powerful, at least, you know, if I'm wearing thicker clothes, I can't even really feel the cooling. They're blowing and you know it's there, but again, a minor gripe. And what surprised me is I haven't experienced this in any car, you know, since my 2000 M5, and I expect it in a 20 year old car, um, there's one cigarette port on the console for the accessory. Granted, there are two USB, which is nice, um, but if you wanna run a radar and say like a dash cam or really anything else like that, uh, there's no second one. Usually cars will have a second in the back somewhere or you know down here. Uh, this one does not. Let me talk about the engine uh, and let me just get on the road and we'll do that now. Uh, with the 200, even without, sunshade goes down automatically in reverse, which is kind of a cool feature. Uh, even without the all-wheel drive, frankly, the 200's not the, or I'm sorry, I keep calling it the 200 because it's a two liter turbo. The 300, it's very fast around town. It's actually very torquey, good get up and go. You put it in sport mode. Let me just show you. A Little bit of kick down in turbo lag, but man, once it's off and we're flying. Um, but on the highway when you're if you do a lot of passing or a lot of you know higher speed highway driving um, Once it gets up to speed. It's actually very good at maintaining it It's very fuel efficient with the 8 speed you can do it at a low rpm uh, in the turbo uh, but getting up from like say 70 to 85 Things like that. It definitely runs out of power on the high end uh, which you could say oh well It's only you know around 240 horsepower uh, so uh, but the A4 uh, engine is better on the high end, even the Mercedes uh, C-Class and definitely the BMW. It's probably closest to the C-Class. It's just the way uh, Mercedes has done their gearing. Uh, it's more, you know, tuned for the Autobahn, so it definitely, it feels a little uh, better uh, in that type of driving. So let's see, yeah, talk about the good on this car. Around town, the engine is quick, it's responsive, it's fast, and it's a very fuel efficient engine. Uh, I do have to say, Lexus has definitely done a good job with fuel economy, so kudos to them on that. Steering is pretty quick when you put it in sport mode. Doing, let me show you guys. So let me try to show you on the steering. Got it in sport mode, got up to speed. See, doing all this, the car's not really responding. So that, you know, that being said, that's a huge area of improvement. Either give it a Sport Plus or in especially cars with the F-Sport treatment. Uh, I know, I believe M is doing this in like the, uh, not the actual M cars, but the M Sports and AMG Sports. They all give it a, a, an, a, like an F-Sport tuning on the steering here, back roads. Uh, and that's where this car really, really shines, believe it or not, with the rear wheel drive, with it being relatively light, um, and it being, you know, fairly torquey on things like that. It is a blast to drive. I even turned on that ASC, that auto, uh, augmented sound feature, um, because I actually kind of uh, miss not having a sound in my car. Uh, other cars on our drive were like overheating. Uh, this one had no overheating problems, which was great. Other, you know, new modern cars like, uh, were having issues because we, you know, it was a hundred degree heat when my friends and I were out driving. So that was, that was a huge, a testament to this car as is the suspension tuning oh, it's a little bit on the rougher side if you're looking for like the luxury uh, choice um, I would skip and you know, maybe skip that um, it's still a Lexus and it's still very nice um, but you definitely can feel the difference um, but man it makes up for it by far in the handling so the brakes are actually really really good when you get really deep into them um, uh, you know you kind of feel a little bit um, but again this isn't a true uh, F car, it's an F Sport, um, which is kind of like their middle ground. They, though that is one component they didn't upgrade. They didn't upgrade the steering and they didn't upgrade, I believe, the brake. Let me tell you what the F Sport is. It's an appearance package, you know, the front bumper, the grill, spindle grill, which is cool. 18 inch F Sport wheels, uh, summer tires, and then interior, there's that cool LFA display. 
Of course, this button is what moves that display over, which I, as I showed you earlier, heated and ventilated F Sport seats, they actually do hold you in really, really well. A good, good bolstering here on the side. It fills my entire hand. F Sport logo on the steering wheel. Again, no F Sport actual steering though. Or shift knob looks pretty similar to the standard one, but it is uh, slightly different. Black headliner trim, which is actually very nice. Uh, and then of course I love the F-Sport suspension. It seems like I've been hard on this car and I don't like it, which is not true. I actually am a huge, huge fan of this car. Uh, I think it can play with any of the Germans, which is a huge compliment. If you think about it, this car is fairly new compared to like a 3 Series or an A4 or a C-Class, which have been around for years. This car is in its third generation. And it's really good. Uh, Lexus has played incredible catch-up. Even the first one was incredibly fun and uh, sporty. Uh, the first gen didn't really feel like a Lexus in terms of like interior quality, ride, things like that. Uh, this, and then this third gen one though is, I mean, it's just a blast. Uh, you can get 1G of acceleration uh, left and right uh, with these summer tires and the F-Sport suspension tuning. Uh, that's really blast. Like, let me throw it through a corner here. Just loves it and it just asks for more. So at the, we're at the point in this review where, you know, I've talked about all the individual components of the car and I've talked about how it drives, but then it comes down to the ultimate question uh, that any car reviewer has to answer, which is, uh, would I buy this car with my own money, right? I definitely would based on, you know, uh, the nice interior, the great surround sound, uh, you know, the fun tossability it has. The only thing keep holding me back would be perhaps the engine. Lexus has an answer for that. They have the IS350. Another thing I have to say in favor of this car that would help me buy it uh, was the price. These start at 38 2 uh, you know, without a lot of options. Uh, and if you get that $3,000 F Sport package, which I do recommend, uh, you know, throw on the, it's through almost three grand for the Mark Levinson because it includes the nav. I wish you could separate that, especially on cars that have Android Auto and CarPlay. Like, I think this stereo is worth almost a, maybe $800, $1,000. Um, but I wouldn't want the nav just because I use my phone and I think, I feel like a lot of people do use their phone. <sighs> I'd almost want to skip that. This has intuitive park assist, which is park assist system really. So, you know, fully loaded out before destination, 45 uh, four for this car, you know, 46 uh, with destination. That's not bad. I mean, that is actually very competitively priced. I mean, if you're looking at a similar BMW, similarly optioned out to this, you're well over 50. Uh, granted, an, the A4 I had, granted that had all wheel drive, uh, but it wasn't even as optioned out as this, and it was 50. Uh, my Mercedes is about the same optioning as this. Granted, it's the coupe, but again, it was 50. Um, so Lexus is, on some of their models, uh, their prices have gone quite a bit up, but they're still, when you compare them against their German competitors, which they can play in that same league, they're a good deal. That's what this car offers you. It offers you, you know, a German car feel, Lexus quality, you know, Lexus interior, Lexus reliability, uh, all of that, but at a really, really, you know, good value compared to the German. So if I had to sum this car up in one sentence, uh, which is another different part of uh, the reviews I'm doing, uh, that last sentence would have been it. I'm gonna do a quick launch in this car, uh, see how many cheese I can get. I just reset the G-meter. It's quick, it, it pulls up to half a G, uh, you know, of, of force uh, when you give it a good launch. Until next time, my speedy racers, drive on.